Hello friends and welcome back. Welcome back to another, another video. Welcome back to our little coffee club. Uh, today I'm gonna give you my final thoughts on the best that the grocery store has to offer us here in the US. I'm gonna talk about these four coffees that we've been playing around with. Uh, they're about to run out, you know, they're all reaching their end. So we gotta summarize things here. I've been trying to compare them as espresso. Um, I will give you my thoughts today as far as that, and maybe we'll pull a shot of espresso, maybe compare a couple of them. We'll see where this, what this leads to. But uh, the first thing I wanna do, I wanna pull a shot with... So I'm gonna start by pulling a shot of the Beanstalk coffee. Uh, Carrie told me that she also enjoyed this coffee best as espresso, just straight shots of espresso. I thought that that was the best way to go with this one as well. Uh, pour over was was fine. It was it was fine, but again, I got the most out of it when I pull shots of espresso, and I was just having straight espresso shots. So today, I'm gonna try to use her recipe. She recommended to go with 18 grams in and 45 grams out. Now, the whole week I've been meaning to write back to Carrie and ask how it was that, uh, as far as her timing, okay? Because timing is very important when you pull an espresso shot. So I'm not sure if she was more towards like 30 seconds or 40 seconds or 20 seconds, I don't know. So I'm just gonna go based on experience. Uh, we'll go with around a 30 second shot. Hopefully it'll be pretty much what she was doing. Uh, but anyway, I thought it would just be fun to try to dial it in as someone that's been watching the videos and recommended the coffee, uh, try to dial it in what they found to be best. So we're gonna start with that. I'm gonna make me a shot of uh, the Beanstalk coffee. And again, I've already done a couple of videos on this coffee. So, you know, look here in the channel if you wanna see more on this particular uh, coffee. And then we'll sit down, chit chat a bit and talk about these. Now, depending on how fast, I, this has been dialed in. So I imagine my first one is gonna be fine. So I'll sit down, have that shot of coffee, talk about these uh, four here, and maybe we'll pull another shot because uh, I really want a cappuccino today. So that's what I want to make. So let's go ahead and uh, pull a shot of the Beanstalk coffee with Carrie's recipe. Okay, so I've been grinding this coffee at 16.7 on the niche. And usually I get a, 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 you know, about a 35, 40 second shot. So let's see what happens today. We'll start by dosing out our 18 grams. Carrie, I can't believe that I forgot to ask you the timing but hopefully whatever it is I get is close enough. <laughs> anyway, I definitely did enjoy this coffee, um, a straight espresso, the best way that I was able to make it. And again, on the tricklet, it gave me very nice uh, pour overs as well. So the tricklet will make you a nice cup of coffee with this coffee. It's not exactly super easy to get it spot on, but uh, but, it, but you could do it, definitely could do it. It's very tasty. Okay, let's see, we're between 18 and 18.1. I think if I take out a bean, it's gonna... Mm. Ah, we're at 18, there you go. Okay, so that's perfect, 18. Let's see if we get any retention today. Everyone's favorite part. The niche is already set at 16, well, I'm calling it 16.7. So just right between like 16 and a half and 17. They're fighters, they're fighters, they're still trying to... <laughs> let's see, let's see if anything falls in. I think we're good, one more time. I think we're good, let's see. So we were exactly at 18. See, are we focused? I think we're focused, here we go. Whoa, what, I did something wrong. <laughs> All right, let me put it from this container to another container and see if we're at 18. 
Oh my goodness, I'm so crazy. In a minute, you guys are gonna hear me saying like, what the heck did I do wrong here? I couldn't figure it out. And I weighed the beans on the little white container and I ground the coffee into the, the niche catch cup, which is a lot heavier. And that's how I ended up with that. But wow, it's unbelievable, I didn't notice. Okay, when I edit this video back, I'm sure I'll see what it is I did wrong. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure how I got that that reading, what it is that I that I pressed or did wrong, but anyway, the coffee is in there. You guys could see it's bouncing right between 17.9 and 18. So we basically didn't have any retention today. It, what we put in is what we got out. Okay, man, I wonder <laughs> when I edit this back, I'll be able to see what I pressed or what I did wrong. But anyway, let's move on with the show. All right, now let's see how we get this back. Uh, can I? Yeah, you know what? All right. Let me dry this. I'm gonna use my old school technique. I'm just gonna use a spoon. <laughs> Before I had the niche and I had this dosing cup, I used to use a spoon all the time anyway. I still have no clue, man. I wonder what I pressed or what I did. All right, come on. This coffee's fighting me. Okay, we got it all in there. Minimum spillage. Do a little WDT. Okay, tamp it down a little bit. Distribute. Tamp. Wow, there's like no resistance. So this is pretty fine, at least for this coffee because the setting is not, that setting is not very fine for most coffees. Yeah, it went down more. It's funny how it's different every single time. Eh? Every time you end up with something, some kind of new thing. Let's lock it in and bring you guys in closer. All right, get the scale ready. You know, it's like the only time that I've had problems with the scale was that time that I think that, I mean, the battery still showed like two lines, but I guess as soon as you start seeing one that go down, maybe you should charge it. I mean, it still lasts like so long that you know, I, I don't know, but that was the only time that I had some kind of issue where it didn't want to weigh the shot. And obviously also when it goes really, really slow, it'll do that. That's, that's kind of normal. I hope they get that figured out. All right, here we go. Let's do like our normal five, six second pre-infusion. We let go of the button. It ramps up to full pressure and it should start brewing our shot. You know, we're off to a slow start. That is building. Okay, so we're hoping for somewhere around 35 seconds. And again, it's 45 grams, so I'm gonna have to stop it a little short than what I normally do. So this is Carrie's recipe. Maybe I just, maybe by 42 I should try to stop it. Okay, let's see where we end up at, 43. Well, it's still dripping a little bit, but it still says, okay, so let's, let's just say we got 43 in 38 seconds. I'm happy with that, I'm happy with that. Let's taste it. Oh man, I, I have my little shot glass here and I still end up, ended up using the cappuccino one. I've been, I've been using these so much that uh, I forgot. Anyway, let's go with this, I'll stir it with a spoon. All right, so again, this coffee here is a Colombian natural, 
from Beanstalk, a roaster out of um, out of Cape Cod. Again, very fast service. I ordered that coffee. It was here, my house here in uh, in Miami, and I don't know. It only took like three days. I ordered it immediately. I had it, so that's pretty awesome. Let's give it a taste. Now, again, this is the very when I very first opened the bag and made my very first uh, brew with this coffee. It was a straight espresso espresso shot, just like this, and it was great. Yeah, it's a, just a straight shot of espresso. It'll give you a lot. This coffee will give you a lot. Um, good level of acidity, some balanced with some sweetness. There is like a grassy taste, like, like a tea-like leaves taste, kind of earthy kind of taste. But there is a good little sweetness there. Maybe like a caramel. It's delicious. Interesting coffee. I like it. So I'm gonna enjoy this, this shot here. Hopefully you guys are brewing something tasty. And let's talk a little bit about our, <laughs> the best of the grocery store. So this journey here started for us, or at least for me, uh, when I saw that James Hoffman video where he talks about, it was comparing around 40 different store-bought coffees. And by the end of that video, he, he does a blind tasting, you know, blind tasting. It's incredible how he can recognize these different coffees. And I mean, you have to see the video. If you see it, you, you know what I mean. But it's, it's pretty remarkable, you know? But at the end of the day, when he finished with his review, he ended up liking Phil's best. The only problem I had with that decision was that Phil's is the only one that he had as whole bean. All the other coffees were pre-ground. So I'm thinking that he got a little bit more out of Phil's due to the fact that it was whole bean. Now, another thing and a, and a lesson that I learned as I as I've been playing around with these coffees, is the following. When I did the same test and I tried them all, at least in my test, they were all whole bean. They were all whole bean. But I used the same grinder at the same temperature with the same brewer, the same timing, everything was the same. And you would think that that's a fair way of doing it. But as I discovered, it's definitely not. <laughs> and I'll explain in a second. It's already cooling down. Those tasting notes are coming up. Again, the high level of acidity is getting balanced by the sweetness of the coffee. It's thick, creamy, wonderful. Now, I can't say that I can taste a big difference between a yield of 45 grams and what I normally do around 50, 52. I think it's just too close to call, at least for me. Maybe I'm sure there's people out there that could do it, but for me, you give me this one, you give me the like a 52 gram, 54 gram shot, and I don't think I'll be able to uh, tell too much difference. At least not from the niche where you always get like nice thick creamy shots. I still have a little bit more. You know, I'm gonna maybe still try to reach out to Carrie. It won't be on a video, but I'll try to get the right timing. So, um, yeah, by the time that she sees this video, I'll be done with that bag of coffee. So I'll have to write her um, at the time of recording it. And maybe I'll still have another shot left and I'll try to get the right timing. But maybe, who knows, maybe I'm already in the right ballpark. Okay, so let's talk some more about these coffees. When I did the review, well, James Hoffman liked this one best. And this one is an, was an obvious second for him. It's hard to tell between these two 
which one was third and which one was fourth, okay? In my opinion, and you gotta see the video to see, it's, it, you know, he didn't really say this is third, this is, so it's hard to tell, but I, I'm pretty sure this was third and this was fourth. And these were the top four coffees of about 40, okay? So, so yeah, so in my, in my uh, testing, in my testing, I placed them in this order. This was first, second, third, and fourth. Now, now here's the thing. Again, I did them all exactly the same. And I don't think that that's a fair way of doing it because for example, this coffee calls for a totally different method than this coffee. You can't brew them with the same timing at the same temperature. It just doesn't work. It's way unfair for this coffee. So the temperature that I chose, the timing that I chose, so that is, you know, the grind size will kind of determine your timing and the amount of agitation, and a few other factors, but, but it's, grind size is very important when it comes to timing. So the grind size was the same for all of them. The timing was basically the same on all of them. Water temperature was the same. Now, the thing is that's not very fair. It was not very fair for this coffee at all because this coffee, I found it to be best when you brewed it. First of all, you gotta grind coarser, okay? You gotta grind coarser and your contact time between the water and the coffee should be less. Your timing, it should brew faster. This coffee, you need to brew faster than this coffee, okay? This coffee here, I found a water temperature of perhaps, and now we're talking about pour overs, okay? We're talking about pour overs. On the origami specifically, the water temperature on this coffee, I found it to be best at around 89, maybe even down to 88, perhaps as high as 90, okay? So just try 89 and try to get a brew time of perhaps around three minutes on the origami or maybe a V60 or something like that. And I think this is excellent. As a matter of fact, okay. <laughs> I knew this was gonna get a little complicated. Let me finish this before it gets cold on me. It's wonderful. <laughs> mm. All right. Sad to see you go. <laughs> all right, all right, let me try to explain myself, okay? This cup, it, you know, it depends on what you, what you like. I cannot say that any one of these coffees is better than the other one. They're all good, they're all great. As far as what you could buy at the regular supermarket, any one of these you'll be happy with, okay? But it depends a lot as to what you like, okay? This coffee has by far the highest acidity of all of them. If you find that level of acidity and brightness in the coffee to be something that you enjoy and delicious, then this one, I'll, you'll probably like this one the best, like I did. When I make a pour over, or when I make a straight shot of espresso, the brightness and the acidity, I, I, I love it, I love that. Now, in espresso, not so much as in pour overs. In pour overs, I really like that. Uh, in pour overs, brightness and, and, the, and a nice level of acidity. Now that acidity has to be balanced, okay? It has to be balanced with sweetness, with other interesting flavors in there. It can't just be straight up acidity. You probably just, if you're not getting the other flavors from this coffee and you're not getting balanced with some sweetness, it's probably under extracted. You're probably gonna have to go a little bit hotter or brew it a little bit longer in order to get, um, you know, the best out of it. So because that acidity needs to be balanced with sweetness. Just like we just had in the shot of espresso, it needs to be balanced. It can't just be straight up acidity. Maybe some people enjoy that. I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not one of those. Okay, so brightness and acidity, very important in pour over for me. Now for straight shots of espresso, it's something I enjoy a whole bunch, but I can also have a nice sweet shot of espresso. Okay, and that's what this will give you. This, if you make a straight shot of espresso like we just did with this one, with this coffee, it'll be totally different. Anyone can tell the difference, okay? This is not like the grinder comparison where, you know, it's just, it's such a slight thing that you can't. No, you'll be able, anybody will be able to tell, okay? Do the experiment. Brew these two coffees and tell me you can't tell the difference. 
okay? This coffee, if you get it right. Now, if your brew time is too long with this coffee, which, in, or the water too hot, okay, the, in, the, in our first testing, of, our first comparison as pour over, the water was too hot for this coffee. And then you get like a burnt taste, you start getting over extracted, like uh, bitterness and like burnt flavor. And it just, again, that's why, that's why it suffered in that test. And that's why it's not fair. Okay, so if I would have brewed it a bit faster, so grind it coarser, and with a way lower water temperature, we were at 97 during the test. So if I would have been down to 89, then this coffee would have shined. And I would have had the sweetest cup of coffee from any of these four, because this is by far the sweetest coffee. If you get a, a shot of espresso from this coffee, I'd say in about 30 to 35 seconds, okay? A one to two and a half like this, or maybe one to three ratio, 50 grams, something like that. 18 grams in, about 50 grams out, in about 30 to 35 seconds from this coffee, it's just gonna be lovely. It'll be sweet. It'll be the sweetest of all the four. And the same thing, with a pour over, this coffee will shine. It'll give you the sweetest cup, no doubt. So, although this was what I, when I first tried them on that comparison, this was my placement. As a matter of fact, if I was gonna rebuy these, I would be, I would do this. Look at how much it changed, you know? Again, they're all very close. They're all gonna give you a nice cup of coffee. Don't get me wrong. But if I had to pick only two, I would pick these two. They are the most different, okay? This one, if you get it, this is the hardest one to deal with. The most difficult one to dial in. That <laughs> This thing, I showed you guys, okay? It has those really dark beans and the really light beans that makes it so complicated to get it right, you know? so. If you go like the water temperature is too cold, then the lighter beans are under extracted. If your water temperature is too hot, then the dark beans are over extracted and burnt tasting. So it's just hard to deal with, okay? <laughs> this one, but if you get it right, it could be very rewarding. And you know, I don't know if <laughs> it's hard to put, to do the placement, it's hard to do it. All I know is this, that if I was gonna rebuy these, and I will, because this one I always have on tap, you guys know. I always keep some of that around. It's what I, when I don't have anything specialty, this is my go-to, okay? As a matter of fact, this morning, I made a pour over on the triplet with the Duncan. It was delicious. That acidity balanced by some sweetness. It was about seven minutes on the, on the triplet, and it was, it was awesome, okay? So, but, when I want, let's say I wake up in the morning and I want a cup of like sweet, let's just a sweet, warm cup of coffee, then this is the go-to. Forget this one. I will go to this. If I want to pull a shot of espresso to mix with milk, forget all the three. It's just go to this one. It's going to give you the sweetest, most caramel, chocolate type tasting coffee to mix with milk. And for me, when you're making a milk-based drink, that's the best, okay? Now, if I want a straight shot of espresso, then it depends. I, again, it depends. If, I, if, if I'm in the mood for something bright and high level of acidity, which a, lot of, which a lot of times I am, when I'm just gonna have the straight espresso, then I might go to this. Uh, so, there you have it, there you have it. Uh, definitely, if you have these two on top, you won't be disappointed. Okay, it's just a matter if you want something sweeter or if you want a bit more brightness and acidity, then you take your pick. Keep in mind, again, water temperature is very important when it comes to, you know, that extraction. Okay, so if you wanna, uh, if you're working with a darker roast, then you wanna go with the cooler water. Okay, if you're working with a lighter roast, you wanna get that water warmer and closer to boiling. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, with the one from Beanstalk, this one, you basically, you could go to boiling. Just You could just go to boiling and try to ex get the best extraction out of it possible. As a matter of fact, you're gonna have to go with a long brewing method. I don't think with a V60 or the Origami, I wasn't able to get the best cups 
of pour over from that coffee. I, I had to go to the tricklet where the contact time between the water and the coffee is very long and I was able to get a good extraction. So there you have it, a little bit on water temperature. And you know, I learned a lot from doing this experiment. I wonder if you guys have done something like this in the past, comment below, let me know. As a matter of fact, I really appreciate the comments. Carrie and Joan, thank you so much for the comments. Uh, I haven't heard from a, a, um, a few of the boys, I haven't heard from you guys for a while, but I know I'm getting views because I don't know how people enjoy hearing me talk about coffee for a whole hour. Like my videos are super long, but I'm sure that you guys are still watching because I, I get the views, but you know, and I do get some, some likes, I appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time to hit that like button and to comment something below. Uh, we keep building the community every now and then. I see it's trickling in. We're getting some new, some new subscribers. One of these days we'll make it to a thousand. Imagine that at this rate, it'll take us 10 years. I hope I'm still making coffee then. Anyway, let's go ahead. I'm going to pull another shot. Uh, what should we, what should we compare? Let's try to, let's, maybe we should do two shots, but this always, happens to me, it gets complicated, I mess up something, the video gets super long. That's just one at a time, one at a time. I'm gonna, you know, I want my cappuccino. So I'm gonna brew this because I know this gives me the best, sweetest cup. I'm gonna brew this, make a cappuccino, and then we'll continue. <laughs> so I haven't talked about my cappuccinos for, for a while. Uh, let's go over it today for some of the new viewers, but basically the workflow for my cappuccinos, uh, in the little carafe here, I have about six, maybe seven ounces of milk. So the milk is right below the, where the spout begins. So right about here, okay? And from that, I will probably use about maybe five ounces of uh, milk. And your, the cups that I use to brew my cappuccinos on, so these cups here from Kroof, they're double walled, they're really nice. It looks really nice if you could do latte art, which I can't, but <laughs> we'll see what we get today. So, so yeah, these hold eight ounces of fluid. Okay, you can find them in the Crew web website. So I use about two ounces of espresso. Okay, that's 54 grams, it's about two ounces. And about five ounces of milk, and the rest of the top is just foam. Okay, cappuccino should have a nice layer of foam on top. Okay, so all the milk-based drinks with espresso, the, they all take, it's, it's all, they're all the same, you know, it's, it's milk, espresso, and foam. So what makes the difference from drink to drink is the ratio between the milk, the espresso, and the foam. Some drinks might take almost no foam, like a flat white. Some might take a little bit of foam, a lot of milk, less espresso, like a latte, and then a cappuccino, which is about uh, one part espresso to two parts milk and a nice layer of foam on top. Of course, you can change that as you like to whatever it is your taste buds dictate. But anyway, the milk I like using is this one. Uh, this stuff is really good, very tasty. This milk is uh, definitely was a, a game changer for my, for my cappuccinos. The, the little carafe that I use for uh, steaming the milk this one is from Barista, uh, Barista Swag. So Barista Swag. I'll try to look up the, the website and put it here so that you guys, if you wanna look into these little, but these are quite expensive and you definitely don't need something like this to try to do latte art. As a matter of fact, the Bravo came with this one. It works pretty much just the same. Now the spout does make a little bit of a difference. Um, well, that's a long explanation that I'm not gonna get into now, but there's somewhat a little bit of a difference, okay, it's between the two, but not much. What else? Okay, so, yeah, so usually I like mixing the sugar and the milk before I even start the process, so it starts to incorporate. I kind of use a spoon to stir it around and then I just let it sit there. When I steam it, I already steam it with the sugar inside. So when I pour my drink, it's ready to go. I don't have to do the sugar after or anything like that, so, I can just sit down, enjoy my drink, and not do any of that stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, dose out 18 grams of the Starbucks coffee. Again, this from the bunch, this is definitely the sweetest. 
uh, for making milk based drinks is just delicious. If you like a nice sweet shot of espresso, then this would be your go to. And if again, if pour overs, you enjoy them just like as sweet as possible, this is probably the best choice from those four. So let's go ahead, those are the 18 grams. You know, I'm still thinking about what it is that I pressed. What did I do like <laughs> when I edit this? Man, I wonder what I pressed. Whoa, 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 where am I going with this? I'm already up to like 20 something grams here. <laughs> let's, take, let's take some out. All right, 18. Whoa, 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 wow, I got close. Okay, wait, a little less. All right, 18, perfect. Okay, close the bag, put it back over there. I'm gonna put this away. Okay, so we got 18 grams exactly. So I'm gonna grind. Oh, let me see what the setting is for this. Okay, so with this coffee, I'm supposed to be at 16 and I'll, I should get around a 35, 40 second shot. You guys saw that with the uh, Beanstalk coffee, we were at 16.7, so I'm quite close. Okay, so we're there at 16, let's do some grinding. Couple beans still bouncing around in there. I think we got everything. Let's see. Okay, so we were at 18, we're at 18.1, so we had a little exchange from before. Maybe got a little bit out uh, from the other coffee and mixed in here, but that makes no difference. Again, in my opinion, half a gram up or down is not gonna make any difference as far as taste. Now, what it could make a little bit of a difference is with your extraction time. So you know, half a gram could, you know, slow down your shot a little bit or speed it up depending if you're putting more coffee or less coffee. Okay, so however, in my experience, a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, even 0.3 doesn't do a whole bunch, doesn't do a whole bunch. By the time you get to 0 0.2, 0 0.3, you know, you're, yeah, maybe, a, you know, one or two seconds more or less on your extraction time. It could make a small difference, you know, just, just try to be accurate. If you're weighing your shots and you're within 0 0.2, 0 0.3, I wouldn't worry about it. Let's try to do some puck prep. By the way, when I'm pulling multiple shots, okay, I always do a dummy shot in between. So it cleans, you know, I clean everything out. I do a dummy shot so everything gets hot. The extraction from the dummy shot or the water that comes out, I leave it in my cup so the cup heats up again, okay? And then everything is nice and hot, ready for your next shot. So, you know, that's pretty much it. So yeah, your first shot, if everything is warmed up, you don't have to do anything, you know? If, if, if things are not warmed up, then again, you gotta do your, your dummy shot to get everything hot. It's always best if you have your, the group head is hot, the porta filter's hot, you know, your cup that you're brewing into is warm. All that stuff helps. Okay, a little WDT. This tool here is just some little little wires that uh, help you distribute your coffee in here and declump it so everything's nice and fluffy. Okay. Just tamp it down. If it doesn't go far down enough, you could kind of tell. If it doesn't go far down enough, right now it is, but I'm gonna if it doesn't, you can always push it with your tamper a little bit. Just go around and push it down so that when you remove the dosing funnel, that's what this is called, a dosing funnel. When you remove this, or a dosing ring, sometimes they call it a dosing ring. When you remove it, there's no spillage, okay? Then the distribution tool, again, this might or might not do anything. <laughs> I think if it presses into the coffee a bit, it probably does help. And then I start tamping with this tool just because 
this tamper is more precise than this one, okay? So when you tamp down with this, okay, you don't get a lot of coffee around here. If you tamp down with only with this one, you'll get a bunch of coffee sometimes around, around the edge because it's not precise enough. However, you have to usually finish tamping with this because if you only tamp with this one and the coffee is too fine, then this, you're not going to get any resistance. It won't, you won't be packing it in enough, okay? Again, so your tamping pressure should always be the same. See, I could feel it. It went down. Not a whole bunch, but, a, you know, a good amount. Okay? And at the end, it should be nice and flat. It should be nice and level, nice and flat. And again, if your coffee is very fresh, I'm not gonna do it with this one because I already had a little accident. I told you guys about it. I turned it upside down and it fell right out of the Pota filter, okay? If it's very fresh coffee, right now you could turn it upside down and it'll stay packed inside your Pota filter, okay? That's a little test that I always do. But usually, I have a lot fresher coffee than this. Okay, these coffees, remember, I have like five bags of coffee right now that I'm going through. So I've had um, the same coffees open. These bags have been open for like a month and a half now. So I wouldn't risk it with this one. <laughs> but normally, if you just open the bag and you tamp it right, you can turn this upside down and it'll stay packed in there with no problem. Again, do that experiment at your own risk. <laughs> Let's lock it in and see what we get. You know, that had never happened to me before until recent, okay? And again, using these coffees that I have been using already for a while. The only time I ever had that kind of problem where it's not staying stuck was with the pre-ground coffee that we tried to brew uh, a few videos back where I was trying to mess with that pre-ground coffee from the store. That didn't work at all. It was, it was a mess. Anyway, that, that video's here on the channel. You can... <laughs> it's the one where I'm sitting on the counter with the laptop open. That's, that's the one. All right, so bring you guys in a little bit closer and set up my scale. Oh, let me dry this. Again, when you pull a dummy shot, sometimes there's, you know, a little bit of splashing, although I collect it with the cappuccino cup, but still. Okay, so this scale is the Time More, Time More Black Mirror Nano. And what I like about it is that it has this uh, automatic espresso mode where it will weigh your shot and time your shot all at the same time. In the beginning when you turn it on you saw it said ESP, that's your espresso mode, uh, automatic espresso mode, then you start getting this A flashing. Then you can put your cup on there. It's gonna weigh the cup but then it's gonna tear it. It's gonna tear by itself, okay? When you get the A flashing again you're ready to brew. So again, pre-infusion, just hold your button down, keep holding it down. When you're done with pre-infusion, let it go. The machine will ramp up to full pressure. But again, you have in total about a minute to do this process. If, if you take longer than that, the machine will time out by itself. You see how it's pouring really slow right now? Sometimes, a lot of times, the scale will stop, stop timing your shot. It'll just think it's done and it'll stop timing. I'm not sure why it's going so slow because I had this dialed in, but you see, it just happened. It stopped timing. It's, this is the only thing with this scale that I hope time more fixes. This has to be something in the programming, you know, because it was still coming enough that, you know, it should it should have worked. So I know that this is going to this shot is going to be slow, uh, but we'll see what it tastes like to make a cappuccino. It's going to be fine. It's not too slow. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to stop it because Let's see if it times out. Yeah, okay. All right, so it went for about a minute and I have about my two grams in there already. So, I'm sorry, my two ounces, <laughs> two ounces. It should be about 50 grams in there. Okay, so that is the one thing I hope time more fixes where, you know, if, when the shot is brewing really slow like that, the scale will stop just like you saw just now. Other than that, I haven't had no problems. Uh, I did notice one time that it wasn't timing the shot uh, properly something like what just happened just now and it was the only time that this scale hasn't been full in battery when you charge it this is a rechargeable scale you just recharge it like a phone you know and it 
the the amount of time that the battery lasts is just ridiculous <laughs> it's forever anyway let me stop talking let me let's taste it it's funny it started timing again <laughs> i hope they fixed that that's the only thing but it should be fine let's taste it okay it's to the point where you start getting a little bit of bitterness but not too much it's fine Mm, it's thick, delicious. You mix it with a little bit of milk and sugar. Oh man, believe me, it's gonna be perfect. <laughs> okay, so get a little napkin ready, wet napkin. You're gonna need it so that you can wipe down the steam one as soon as you get it out of the milk. If not, the milk will stick to it. It's not too hard to clean, but it makes it a lot easier if you just wipe it with a, a wet paper towel or something. Uh, as soon as you're as soon as you're done steaming so that's the one thing if you have a dual boiler machine steam pressure is always on tap you know you just turn it and boom you're steaming these you always have to you know put it to steam and it takes a little while and then you can go Okay, perch the steam one so there's no milk in there. Give it a good wipe with the damp towel. You know, dry everything and you're good to go again. The infuser has a cycle where it cools itself down so you can pull another shot pretty much immediately. Let's see if we could get some latte art. Okay, I'm pretty sure there's no way this is gonna work because I took way too long. This has way too much foam. I mean, the foam today, it's out of control. But we'll pour it and we'll see what happens. Yeah, this has way too much foam. Oh my goodness. Look at this. There's no way. I try to do it hard, but there's just so much foam in there. I got half of it. Try to do a little heart for Valentine's Day. <laughs> All right, let me show you guys. Okay, I think that's focused. But you see the heart was starting to form. As a matter of fact, this side of it is pretty, pretty nice. But this is what, oh, there was so much foam on top because I took kind of long talking and all that stuff and all the foam came up and then as soon as I started pouring it I got a bunch of foam came down and that's what usually happens but there's like a half a heart <laughs> I'm sorry guys anyway the taste is what matters let's try it okay so let's give it a taste test oh man that has a lot of foam that is wonderful oh my goodness it's so good mmm you guys have to, well, if you're watching this video, you're already making something like this, needless to say. But if you just ran into this video and you're thinking about getting an espresso machine and getting into the hobby, wow, you're gonna be rewarded. <laughs> so just go for it. Just get some nice entry level, you know, something like the infuser, start to learn. Get basic coffees in the beginning so you can practice and, and get the hang of it. If you want to make milk-based drinks, wow, I would just get this one. If once your palate, once you start getting into like just regular espresso, just drinking the straight shot, no sugar, nothing, just a straight shot, at that moment, maybe uh, get this one and try it. See if you like that brightness and that acidity. Perhaps you will, perhaps you won't, but you'll know. <laughs> now the Tim Hortons, it's just very basic. It won't wow you, but it's a perfectly fine cup of coffee. It's nice. This one could wow you, depends if you get it right. <laughs> or if you get it wrong, you, you're not gonna like it as much. That's all I could say. So for sure, these two are pretty awesome to have on tap at all times. You can make pullovers. 
You can decide on that particular day if you want something sweeter, you want something brighter with more acidity, and then decide which one you wanna make. Once you practice, once you learn, once your taste buds start to um, appreciate, okay, the different tasting notes, then you might wanna get into specialty and start ordering things like Beanstalk, order specialty coffees from different places. We've had Onyx, we've had, you know, we've had a bunch of them. But as a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to start ordering coffee again. All of these are running out in the next, you know, week or so, two weeks, they're, they're all gonna be gone. So I think maybe sometime this coming week, I'll order something new and we'll have something next weekend to, to try. Anyway, guys, cheers. I hope you're brewing something tasty and joining me here. Man, just wonderful. So there's about maybe five ounces of milk, about two ounces of espresso, and then a nice layer of foam. Wow. I wonder when you guys make cappuccinos, do you put any sugar or you just like just the milk? And I mean, the milk has a natural sweetness to it. So you don't, it's not like you really need the sugar, but, but what takes it to me, it takes it to the next level. <laughs> so good. You know, when I'm editing these videos, sometimes I think like, wow, I said this, like all this stuff and like, I, it's <laughs> very hard to follow. Like, I wish I could, you know, get it spot on every time so you guys understand everything I'm trying to say. But, so, or sometimes you just forget to say something. Uh, you know, when you're having regular conversation, obviously the person that's in front of you, they can ask you, you know, hey, I didn't, what do you mean by this? Or I didn't get this or like, and you can explain further or you can, if you mess up, they'll, they will tell you, you know, hey, I didn't get this. And then you can say it a different way. But when I record the videos, sometimes when I'm listening back, I wish I could have said something else or something differently or explain it a different way. You know, comment below. If there's something that you didn't get, something that you want me to elaborate on, I think on these coffees, we've already talked enough about them. The last few videos have been about these five coffees up here. So it's time to get something new. I think this coming week, I will order something else and we'll have a new coffee to try. Uh, well, right now I can't think the, the gentleman's name, the, the guy that he, he told me he worked for, for Starbucks in the, in the past. I'm gonna order probably from one of those roasters that he recommended. There was a couple of them. So I'm gonna go on the websites and choose something, pick something from there and get something new to try. Sure it's fun oh, when you get a, a new bag and you wanna see like the little nuances, you know, the, the differences are not gonna be like tremendous, okay? But it is fun to see the, the differences and the tasting notes and the difference from one coffee to another. Like I said, if you get it spot on, if you get it spot on and you brew this, and either one of these two, you could easily tell the difference. This is just a sweeter cup of coffee. Doesn't have the brightness or the acidity that these two have, especially this one. So the difference between these two, I would say is closer, but the taste profile of the coffee is quite different. This coffee is a little bit, uh, there's like a, fruitiness to it, like maybe berries, something like that. And a higher level of acidity. This coffee, instead of like a fruitiness to it, it's more earthy, more like green, like, I don't know, like grassy, like leaves, like that kind of stuff, like some kind of tea. This, so this one's, you know, it's pretty obvious that it's, it's different, but you know, your palate has to develop. But from this to this, it's obvious. Anybody will be able to, if you get them spot on, you'll be able to tell you they're not the same coffee, <laughs> you know? Cheers, enjoy. So what else? Okay, so when we had, for example, when I tried the Geisha, we, and you know, that coffee was a lot more delicate in flavor. The flavors were not so pronounced. It was like having, again, like having tea, but with very gentle flavors, okay? Nothing that, 
will it is for sure not like something like this that has a, a strong acidity to it you try it and it's just very present let's just say <laughs> again that's something that you might like or you might not so it's just you have to try it the thing with the fills you know it's it's crazy how they mix those kinds of beans like the really light beans and the really dark beans in the same bag so it just makes it hard to dial in but if you get it right it will reward you for sure it'll give you some wows you know and tim horns the most average of the bunch the most just like coffee like nothing spectacular about it but nothing bad about it it's just a perfectly fine cup try it so yeah once you get into the hobby you're always learning there's always something to to take away from from the experience uh, with this experiment i learned a lot about water temperature and how vital it is and the big difference it makes funny enough lance just did a um video as to water temperature but you know it's pretty obvious if you brew coffee and if you're familiar with the brewing process you already know you already know that water temperature makes a big difference and it was very very clear and present when you when you dial these two in there's no way that you're gonna be able to brew these two and get the best out of them at the same temperature there's, there's just no way this is when you need hotter uh, water you need to grind it a little bit finer your extraction time needs to take a little bit longer this coffee you need to brew it a little bit faster and at a colder temperature to get the best out of it where it gets sweet and you don't over extract it and you start getting those uh, flavors like kind of like burnt flavors and uh, bitterness coming out and it's just it, it won't be it won't be at its best for sure anyway guys thank you for thank you for spending a few minutes with me and i really appreciate it it's funny how sometimes I get those comments that they that you guys are enjoying these long videos. I don't know how I get them to always come out to like an hour long. And believe me, I edit, you know, a, a bunch of things. Um, you know, when, when I'm cleaning the machine and going from shot to shot, there's a bunch of things I don't put in the video because for what? What's the point, you know? I'm not talking and I'm just working there and it makes no... <laughs> it's just boring, so... But it's, it's nice to see that, the, uh, you know, there's, there's quite a few fans of our little coffee club here. Uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, I need your help with that. Uh, please comment something below. Uh, give the video a like. And I'll see you guys next week. Hopefully you're brewing something tasty. Cheers. And I'll see you next time.